سبحانه وتعالى الكبير اللي هو سطو بوش الهم سبحانه وتعالى Then Allah سبحانه وتعالى give us the order to think the ayat that we shared yesterday in the Arabic class about the creation of the heaven and the creation of the earth we have the command from Allah سبحانه وتعالى in the Quran to think about the creation of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and I, I remember Dr. Rahim when he said Rabbana ma khalaqata hadha batilan subhanahu they praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't create a, a, the heaven and the earth without aim, without a certain purpose. But let me just try to think with you and try to imagine how the universe and how the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks like. First of all, we have billions of people on the earth. So, uh, uh, approximately we have nowadays like 6.8 billion are living on the earth. And we have more billions left on the earth. And we will have more billions will live on the earth. Will live on the earth. But subhanAllah, all these billions we think sometimes that we are alone on the universe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Quran spoke with us about how he created the, the, the heaven and the, the earth in how many days? Six. Six days. Six. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ Then he established himself over the throne. And we have another ayah says, وَكَانَ عَرْشُهُ عَلَى الْمَاءِ His throne was, was over the sea or the ocean. Then the Prophet وسلم, through the ahadith described to us how the universe looks like. How even after the universe, how even what's before, what's over the universe looks like. So you have the earth, then we have in the solar system, we have the sun. So the sun is bigger than the earth. The sun is bigger than the earth. SubhanAllah, 1.3 million times bigger than the earth. The sun itself. And the sun itself, it is one of the smallest stars in the, in the galaxy. In the whole galaxy. So now can you picture this in your mind? The earth, the star, 1.3 million bigger than the earth. The sun itself it is one of the smallest stars of the whole galaxy. How many galaxies that we have? We have million and billion galaxies. So how many stars in the whole universe, zillions, zillions of stars. That is why we need when we recite Quran and we say, Alhamdulillah Ya Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah, Lord of the whole universe. We have to feel it. Not you, Port Richie, not the United States. But the whole universe, and think about this, the whole earth, the sun, the stars, the galaxies, all of them just in one sky, in one haven. Can you imagine that Allah created seven heavens? After the whole universe, you have the distance between each sky, each heaven, as the Prophet وسلم, himself described in the hadith narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud Imam al Dahabi mentioned and is also narrated in al Bayhaqi. And it is Sahih hadith that the Prophet وسلم, said between the first sky and the second sky the distance of 500 years, 500 
he is walking, flying, which distance, on which criteria, we don't know. Just we have the number 500 years, and between the second and the third, 500 years. Between the third and the fourth, 500 years. From the fourth and the, the fifth, 500 years. From the fifth to the sixth, 500 years. From the sixth to the seventh, 500 years. SubhanAllah. Can you imagine the whole universe? Can you imagine the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We didn't finish it. We didn't finish it. In the seventh sky, as the Prophet said, we have a certain house above the Kaaba directly in the seventh house, in the seventh heaven. It is called Al Bayt al Mahmur. Al Bayt al Mahmur, we have here as humans, we have Kaaba. For the angels of Allah, they have a bait in Mahmur. Every single day, you will find 70,000 angels of Allah go inside that house and they don't come back. So how many of the angels? How wide that house? Can you imagine this? After the Al Bayt Al Mahmud, what we have? Wasi'a Kursi Yus Samawati Wal Aw. Then you will have the chair of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we have chair, then we have throne. So don't think that the chair is the throne. The chair is different than the throne itself. So the chair itself. It is bigger than the whole heavens and the earth. The Prophet was just wanting to give us a little bit of understanding how it looks like. He said, imagine if you have a small ring and you throw that ring to the desert, in the desert, in the Sahara, in the desert. So, the chair is the desert and the whole heavens and the earth is your ring. So the heavens and the earth like the ring and then we have the chair like the desert. What after the chair? After the chair we have the ocean or an ocean. It is not like our oceans that we have. It is a different ocean. Allah created. So the distance between the chain and the ocean, 500 years. Then what after the, the ocean? You will find the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How big the throne of Allah? The throne of Allah, the Prophet ﷺ described again, it looks like a ring, you throw it in a desert, and the throne of Allah looks like the desert, and the chain, and the ocean, the seven head, the earth, everything is like the ring. So how big? The, the, how big is the universe? How big is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And it is extending, subhanAllah, extending. So now we can imagine how it looks like, but just let me tell you something. How many angels they are carrying the throne of Allah? Eight. Eight angels are carrying the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet وسلم, described the distance between the shoulders of, the, of just one of the angels, it is like 500 years. 
the width of the shoulder itself. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. Can you imagine all of this? And what the engines are doing? They are surrounding. They are making tawaf around the throne of Allah. Allah said, If you get oppressed, 
If someone hurted you, just say, Ya Rab, Oh Allah. And he says, Labbayk Abid, Oh my servant, come close to him while you are doing sujood. Say, Ya Rab. And Allah will say, Yes, my servant, what do you need? Allah comes to the first heaven every night just for you to ask is there anybody wants me to forgive him? Is there anybody wants something so I can get to him? SubhanAllah. Think about this. Allah, you can feel, you can find people. Allah, they feel arrogant. And sometimes we look to them, Ya Miskeen, you are Miskeen, you are so weak. If you got nail in your legs, you will cry. If you have pain in your stomach, you will not sleep. If you have headache, you are so weak. So why you feel arrogant? Why you dis disbelieve Allah? Sometimes when we hear the adhan, Allah, the Almighty says, Hayya ala salah. Come on to pray. You find people are lazy, feel sleepy. No, no, I don't have time. I don't have time to come to the masjid. Imam, I'm so busy. Brothers and sisters, we need to try to be humble to Allah. We need to try to show respect and humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while we are worshiping Him. Just one sajda and Allah will open the gates of mercy for you. And this is the creation beyond even the universe. The whole universe. Think about the powerful of Allah, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the Almighty. He can destroy you. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you so arrogant in one of his slaves, he start to punch him. He start to test him, to teach him, don't be arrogant. You are so young. Some people, when it comes to the commands of Allah, they say, no, 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 I cannot accept it. You have to convince me first. You have to give me evidence, otherwise I will not accept it. No, 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 no. Some people feel arrogant. They feel that they just, only the people can understand, and the rest of people are idiots. Who told you that? You are just a number. You are just a number. When you die, who will remember you? After 10 years, who will remember you? You are just a number. Like those who be for us, and like those who will be after us. Think about your relationship with Allah. That is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to teach the Sahaba the main aim, the main goal for your life to please Allah. To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be ready when you stand before Him to answer the questions. To pass over the, the bridge. To pass the, the test and the exam. And you will find the gates of paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open it for you. Brothers and sisters, it was just a quick reminder about our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's make a dua to Allah to give us the ability to understand our religion. Let's make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to worship Him, to thank Him.
Allahumma ameen. Oh Allah, we ask you to forgive our sins, the minor sins and the major sins, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah, we ask you to protect all of us from the hellfire. Oh Allah, we ask you to shower all of us with, with your mercy. Oh Allah, we ask you to gather all of us in Jannah and Firdaus with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh Allah, we ask you to grant us the intercession of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh Allah, shower all the Muslims who passed away, shower them, Ya Rabbil Alameen, with your mercy. Oh Allah, give shifa to the sick people. Oh Allah, help the poor and the needy. Oh Allah, give us rahmah and mercy from your side. Allahumma ameen. Zakumullah khaira. Assalamu alaikum. When the Prophet went to visit Maharaj, uh, yes. there was a place where the divine could not go, angels would not go and further. Yeah, it was in 